welcome, welcome, welcome. Praise the Lord. I am Pastor Gary Mack here in my home, a representative and a minister, associate minister of Shallow Baptist Church, one church in two locations where our senior pastor is the Reverend Dr. James Allen Duncans. I want to welcome to my home. I'm down in my man cave uh, for the second week for our Bible study, our Wednesday night Bible study. So I'm so excited. I pray that you would get on the line, get on our Facebook channel, YouTube channel, and our Facebook channel. Tune in with us tonight because there's a word just for you. Once again, I am Pastor Gary Mack. I'm so excited to be here in your home with you. I'm at home again. I'm relaxed. Um, and there is a word we're going to pick up where we left off last week called it finding your peace in the middle of chaos. Finding your peace in the middle of chaos. I know I can get an amen on that because so many of us, especially during this holiday season, is living in a world chaos. I'm not just talking about losing a loved one. We know that can be very painful. I'm talking about where your financial situation, where you're going to do so much this Christmas time. We like sharing and, you know, we like spending money. We like doing something for other people, try to make somebody else day. But sometimes that heavy load, that chaos of what you're going on in the world, a uh, sickness, uh, it, it can be your financial, uh, you know, situation where you, your money is just not there. It's not like it used to be. You ain't getting the hours. You can. It, it could be anything. It could be a sickness. It could be worried about a way with child. It could be anything that caused chaos in your life that caused some type of disturbance. And we followed up last week. You know, we started out saying the meaning of chaos. And you see it mean complete, uh, excuse me, the complete disorder or confusion. Complete disorder or confusion. So many times we can get confused. With life, period. With the weight of the world, we can get confused on making decisions, the right decisions. You know, sometimes our spouse, sometimes we don't always see eye to eye. And we have a decision to make that can can benefit our outcome in life. And sometimes they can be very difficult. You hang on in there. Don't don't give up. Don't give up. We, we have lost some loved ones. Uh, I shared about my mother and my father and my brother and uh, two of my best friends that are going on. Did it hurt? Yes, it did. Did it bother me? Yes, it did. But I had to find peace. And the only way I could find peace was through the Word of God. I, I know what I'm talking about tonight. I know you might not want to hear it. But the Word of God is the only thing. The only thing. And it is a living thing. It is a powerful thing. It is a tool that you can use in the morning, in the midnight hour. To be able to get you out of that funk that you're in. Sometimes we just worry about our children. You know, we, you know, like I said, when it was kids, we worried about them. But seeing like now that they've grown, we worry about them even more. God would take that worry if we learn how to put our trust, our total trust, in Him. Can I get an amen? I know where I'm going tonight. Uh, those are some of the words uh, that we use, and the reason why I want to keep going over this because. Sometimes when you're going through a situation, the devil confuses our minds so much. We really can't divine our state of mind that we're in. We can really be in a bad state of mind. Uh, mental health is one of the leading causes of uh, Christians being depressed or uh, just, just worrying out of control where you can't even focus on worshiping God or ministering to God's people because you have this all this chaos and confusion going on in your mind. You know how the enemy is. The enemy comes to steal, kill, and destroy. But he, he comes at your mind. He, he places a thought in your mind that caused you to get off your game, where you can't be effective. You can't, you can't be that effective witness that you used to be. That excitement that you once had is gone. But the Lord, the Holy Spirit, want to bring that back. And when you reunite back with the Holy Spirit, when you reconnect with the Holy Spirit, meaning trusting in God, knowing that he's with you every step of the way, then we can walk in victory. Can I get amen? We can walk in it. I'm, I'm talking about walking where you remain in it, no matter what comes your way. No matter what comes your way. And we're going to go over our foundation scripture again. I need you to hold on to this. I'm not I'm not just throwing these words up here just to 
It's just for you to read. Say, oh, look, just read it and run with it. Sometimes when you're telling somebody to hold on and trust God and to hold on to your peace, that might sound easy. It might sound like something easy to do. Oh, you got to do is trust God and have peace. But when you're going through the fire, it can be very difficult at times. It really can. It can be rare, very difficult at times. And I understand. Just today, just going through my mind, just thinking about some of the stuff I'm going to have to face and the stuff I'm going to have to go through in life. And I'm getting old. I'm getting grayer. And, uh, and you wonder, how, how much longer do I have on this side? And the enemy try to put that fear into your heart saying, you know what? Time is just passing by, in which it is. And that's the reason why believers, I'm talking to you tonight with such enthusiasm because it, it's our job to get the word out. It, I, I need to say that again. It is our job as believers to get the word out to the unsaved, to the ones who have stumbled and they need to get back up. We need to help show them the way, not only by preaching and teaching the word of God, but most of all, by seeing. Remember we talked about last week? Uh, so we said, David said, I waited patiently on the Lord. I waited patiently on the Lord. And he said about, remember he talked about his tears? He said his tears was his, that was his food. Because while he was waiting on the Lord, he was hurting. He was like, Lord, where are you? Even though it sounded like he was giving God praise, David was still crying out to God. said, Lord, I'm waiting, but where are you? And he said, he talked about in the later verse of that, um, chapter 40, it says that men were watching him. David said that men were watching me, meaning they were looking at him. So when he started doubting and giving up and uh, talking negative, the men was watching. He said, isn't this this David? When he was a little shepherd boy, when he came before King Saul and he grabbed the stones and he slayed the giant. Is this the same David that killed the uh, lion and the bear? Is this not the David that killed the ten thousands? Sometimes you can be on your high horse where everything seemed to be going your way. You're laying your hands on the sick and they're recovering and you're speaking those things as not as though they were and everything seemed to fall in line. But David had to learn through his struggles and through some pain. Remember the three things? I'm going to go over them again. The three things that can bring peace in your life is pain. Yeah, I know I know you want to hear something else. I know you want to hear holiness. I know you, God is holy. Yes, I know you want to hear that. But your pain can lead to that. What it does, it gets your attention. It shakes you. It shakes your very core and causes you to wake up and fall in line and call on the only one. That can help you. Can I get an amen? He is the only one that can help you. And when we get sense, our spiritual sense, and we know we can't make it without him, we know we cannot make it without him. That's when we've been to call on him because the pain that we go through, the discomfort, the chaos, the confusion, our mind is so disordered where we need somebody that can help. And David called on him. David called on the name of the Lord. So when you read the scripture, the scripture I have behind me, Philippians 4, 6, and 7, it says, be anxious for nothing. But if y'all going to be anxious, <laughs> but in everything by prayer and petition, making your request known, making it known unto God, letting him know what you stand in need of. But when you do it, when you make your request known, unto God. Do it with thanksgiving. Oh, if I could stop right there. The reason why we need to do it in thanksgiving, because first of all, when we call on him, you must realize that he is the only one that can do it. And, and it's like this here. It's just like a parent giving a child something and they're not thankful for it. They, they might need some money. They might have needed a coat. They might need some clothes. You know they needed it. But the thing is, you want them to appreciate the one who can bless them, which is you, the parent, the one who's in charge, the one who is responsible for them. And when you buy something for them or you bless them with something, at least thing you want to hear is thank you. Let me know that you appreciate what I've done for you. And the Bible tells us in this text, it says, be anxious for nothing, but in everything, 
everything by prayer, prayer, talking to the Lord, dialoguing, communicating with him, making your request known with thanksgiving, and let your request be known unto God. I mean, don't ask God to turn around and ask somebody else. If you ask somebody else, be led by God to ask that person. But you got to make sure that your first initial move, Matthew 6, 33, seek ye first. The, the reason why we need to seek God first, because he is first. And before you can say, I want to be a better husband. I want to be a better man of God. I recommend that you seek him first. Fall down on your knees. Call on him. Make your petition known. Make your request known unto God. Pray with thanksgiving and see what he do. I am a living witness. First of all, I want to be a living witness that believers can doubt more than the unsaved. <laughs> can I say that again? I, first, I want to commit. I want to admit that a believer can doubt just as much as an unsaved person. As if we have no hope, as if we have no future, if we don't, as if we can't, we don't have the victory. We doubt God so much. And sometimes I beat myself up. Yeah, I'm giving a confession right now. Sometimes I beat myself up saying, Lord, why you put up with me? You bless me well, man, I'm happy. And then when things don't go my way, I'm doubting. You're like, Lord, where are you? I'm like, David, I'm waiting, but where are you? <laughs> And, and, and I want to help somebody tonight because as I give my confession, hopefully you can give your confession unto God or somebody you can trust. Maybe everybody won't handle it. Oh, I thought you were a Christian. I thought you were saved. Well, you can say that if you want to. I know who to call on. I know who to bow, put my tail between my legs and walk back unto God. Say, Lord, forgive me for acting crazy and acting stupid again. Lord, I need you and I'm sorry. Lord, I remember you done it for me before and you will do it again. Make your request known. Talk to him. Because you're talking to somebody who's alive and doing well. Somebody who can turn things around. Turn your situation around. That can turn that that pain that you carry into joy and laughter. I, I, he's done it for me. I've seen him do it for other people. And the reason why we need to share the goodness of the Lord and the word of our testimony, because God, it says, we overcome by the blood of the lamb. The blood of the lamb is what covers us and keeps us. But our testimony is relatable to other people. What you've been through, what God is taking you through, what the, God is allowing the enemy to do to you, because God knows that he's going to turn things around if you trust him. And sometimes God turns around even when we don't trust him. He says, you're not ready yet. My mercy and grace got to continue to come like it always does. But when you get strong enough and you're going to go through the fire again, God wants you to step out on faith. He wants you to trust him. And that's what we have to do. So my job, my assignment tonight is to encourage you. Yes, you're going through. And yes, you will continue to go through. But what are you going to do about it? This is scripture you have to hold on to to get you through those troubled times. Can I get an amen? Amen. Say it myself. Make your request known unto God. And the peace of God. That's what we're talking about. Y'all know, know the way we're going. We talk about peace, calm, tranquility, quietness in our spirit that we can go forth teaching and living the word of God, being the best example we can be. The peace of God, which surpasses all understanding. You won't be able to comprehend. You won't be able to find words to be able to find it. We talked about it last week. I just want to remind you again. You ain't going to find some words that describe how good God is. You ain't going to find words that can de define how merciful God has been to you and I. And I'll be on that. He's been that way to the world. Look at the wicked. Seems like the wicked are getting stronger. They're doing any and everything they possibly can do. And they still, the sun is shining over their head. The Bible said the rain fall upon the just as well as the unjust. God is merciful. Yes, he is. Meaning God will give all of us an opportunity. 
And we have to make sure that we're preaching and teaching and living the good news. I know we're living in the last days. We talked to, we, I talked about this to the ministers uh, during the ministry training class. We had a good time. And I was sharing with them about the end time message. And I challenged them. I challenged you. I asked them to develop an end time message. And my main motivation to ask them that question was led by God to ask that question or to challenge them with that. And the motivation was, is to see, are oh, we going to immediately run and say, Jesus is coming back? That's the end time. No, no, no. The, the objective of what I was trying to uncover or the release from them is saying is, in time messages, what is God saying to me to give to his people right now? That's the end time message. Because the end time, we know Jesus Christ is coming back. We know the signs of the time. We know the fulfillment is all, you know, fulfilled everything. You can come back right now at this very moment. And if you do, I want to make sure that I'm right and I'm teaching somebody that can help them along the way. No, I'm not a theological scholar. And I'm not even going to uh, act like I'm pretending I am. But one thing I am, I'm hungry for the Lord and I know where my help comes from. And sometimes if that's all you got to hold on to, you hold on to it. But you continue to invest in yourself. And that's what we're trying to do to the ministers. And I'm enjoying it. With, we, we're doing it together. I'm investing in myself and they're investing in themselves. And we, I challenge them to put together with all the resources that we have, and with the outline that we have discovered, through a, a preaching a healthy and a sound doctrinal message. And I challenge them. And I challenge you. If you know the Lord, put together a message. When you run across somebody in the street, what, what 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 can you give them? Forget about in the pulpit. Pulpit is not where we were called to. We were called to minister wherever we go, because we carry we are the church and we carry God wherever we go. Do you have an end time message? What is God saying to you for the world today? I, what He's telling me to tell y'all tonight is there is peace, some godly peace that surpasses all understanding and will guard your heart. Your heart, your spirit, man, and your mind, your soul, the way you think. The devil playground, we plant that seed. He called, he come to deceive you through your mind, your thought. He can't make you do nothing. But he show good as planting the seed in your mind and making you believe the lie that he's been telling since he was created. Can I get an amen? I know y'all say, go ahead and move on, Pastor. Man. Yeah, uh, that's the problem. We've been moving on too quickly. And we've been sick, spiritually sick, because we haven't held on to what God. He said, be anxious. Don't be excited about nothing else. But if you do, be, be excited about prayer and making your petition known unto me with thanksgiving. And see when I open up a window of heaven and pour you out a blessing that you won't have room enough to receive. What am I talking about here? When you get in trouble and there is no peace and you step out on faith, remember, you can't see it. Faith is something you can't see. And you said, God, I remember your word and I believe your word. I'm hurting right now. I can't stop the tears from flowing, but I do know you're a God that don't make no mistakes. Lord, help my own, just like the man in, in the New Testament. So Lord, I believe. Lord, but help, help my unbelief. Can, can I talk to somebody again? Lord, help my unbelief. Help my unbelief. Here it, is, here it is on the screen. He will guard your mind, your heart, and your mind through who? Christ Jesus, which is the answer. I, I want to move right along because I, I want to get to where I need to go. And we, we talked about um, some things that lead you to peace. Um. Uh, God's gift of peace, St. John chapter 14 and 27 reads, it says, peace I leave with you. But he said, the peace that I leave with you is not as the world's peace. I like the world give you peace. The world give you peace for a day or for a few minutes, maybe for a week. But God give you that inward peace where your spirit man is at rest. Your spirit man, that thing that troubles you. You know, your spirit man can be all jacked up where 
You could be smiling on the outside, but on the inside, you're miserable. You're feeling less than a man. You're feeling like you can't make it. You're feeling like trouble's coming around the corner. That, that's one of the things, I can stop right there. That's one of the things that I struggle with, and I believe most Christians do. And that is that we haven't learned how to receive a blessing from God. Now, I'm, I'm, I'm explaining it. I'm explaining it. But I'm explaining my version. I'm, I'm, I'm going to tell you how what was going on in my mind. I had to renew my mind through the word of God according to Romans chapter 12. Be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Okay? What it is, I could get blessed with something. Money, you know, financial blessing, a good health report. But in my mind, I couldn't truly enjoy it because I was always concerned about how long it's going to last. If I could stop there, right, I'm, I'm going to set some money free right now. If, if if you can get past that, that's the peace of God. That's not as the world gives. The world give it like, okay, I better hold on to this peace as long as I can because it ain't going to last long. I know I just got blessed with some money, but it's going to go so fast I'm going to be broke again. I know I just got a, a, a good diagnosis. My cancer is gone. I don't need no more chemo or, or radiation treatment. But in your spirit, man, it's trouble. Because you're always looking for the enemy to raise his ugly head. And you, you're looking. You say, he's coming. He's coming. When is he coming? When is he coming? And you couldn't even enjoy the blessing that God has stored upon you. And, and sometimes that's why we fall back. I, I know what I'm talking about because that's what I did. The Lord said, you got to stop running back to what you think. He said, I, I, I'm not you. My ways are not your ways. My thoughts are not yours. So why are you thinking like that? You belong to me. You have been bought with a price. You have been purchased by the blood. By the blood that I shed on Calvary's cross. My blood got power. <coughs> my blood covers. My, my blood can resurrect the dead. Give you a new life. And you run around here like you're defeated. I'm talking to somebody. You run around like you're defeated. You can't even enjoy having fun with your own kids. Because you worry about it. You're looking and saying, when the devil going to come? When when they gonna come take this from me? And you done forfeited your blessing. I, I know I know what I'm talking about. That's the world piece, temporary, part-time. But God wanna make you whole and complete. And that's peace. When you know when everything falls around you, I'm still okay. I'm still all right. Let it says, peace I leave with you. My peace I give you, not as the world do give to you. Let not your heart be troubled. That sound familiar? It sounds same chapter, chapter one. It starts out the same John chapter. It says, let not your heart be troubled. Believe in God, believe also in me. For in my Father's house there are many mansions. We know that. We know that scripture. We done heard it. We heard it at funerals. We can quote it. But God is telling us over and over again, let not your heart be troubled because what I've done, what I'm continuing to do in your life, it was finished, but I'm still working in your life because what I did is done, but you still got to see it daily. You got to believe the manifestation of my word daily. Jesus finished it. The comforter is here for those who want to receive it. But if you don't receive it in your heart, and you don't grab the peace of God that he gave unto you. He said, not as the world gave, but as I gave. I sent my son and gave you peace. And if you hold on him, you have absolutely nothing, nothing to worry about. I know that sound. I know that to be said, well, I, I'm trying, Pastor Mac. I'm trying too. But the reason why we give up when we turn away from the word of God, because the word of God is, is awesome. We know that when you're in it, when you're studying it. But it also can be so far in distance when you stop reading and you stop studying. So that's why you got to continue. I'm talking I'm talking to myself. Sometimes I can get into the work where hours can go by and I don't want to get out of it. I just want to live in it because my, my spirit is being fed. I feel connected because I feel that he's right there with me. He's opening up my mind to be able to understand the revelation of his word. And that is exciting. And then there's times where I struggle to pick it up. 
I struggle to open the Bible. You're not crazy. He said, let not your heart be troubled. I went and I done some things with you. I, I'm going to move on. Can I, can I stay? Give me, give, me, give me one more second. Please, a couple of seconds. Let not your heart be troubled. When we lose a loved one. Now, I might need somebody to come minister to me this same thing when I go through. Because in this life, y'all, no, we're going to have death. He said, once upon it unto man to die, and then the judgment. But it still can be overwhelming. That's to everybody. Myself, you, everybody. Because the person we're connected with, who we might who might be going on. I understand. I really do. I really do. And I don't, I don't try to take lightly of that. But I do have to understand that God do knows what's best. And that, that's when you're going to have to trust him even when you don't feel like it. I'm not going to stand there long. Somebody just needs to hear that. And I just want to encourage you that you're not alone. You're not crazy. But God is the one that can give you that inner peace. That's what I'm talking about. That peace that the world can't give you. That means that you can go on. You can go on successfully. You can go on being that mouthpiece and that representation of Christ. Amen? Live in your heart, live in your heart, Colossians 3, 3.15, and let the peace of God that rules in your heart, that which is also were called one body, and be thankful, be thankful, amen? Just a couple of scriptures that I want to go over real quick to get me where I'm, I need to get to tonight. We're talking about what leads to peace. We talked about the pain. We talked about the pressure. And we talked about poverty, not having, lack. And I mentioned that I was going to talk about Esther, but I really don't want to go too far in Esther. I'll pick it up next week. But Esther, I'll give you a little dab, a little taste. Esther had to make a decision. People were being persecuted. Uncle uh, Malachi, um, not Malachi, excuse me. Uh, I might quote his name long. Forgive me for not being there. going to come to me. Uh, but her uncle, her uncle was a man of God. And his people was being persecuted. And he had to get the information to Esther. And um, he was getting the information to Esther saying, listen, we need you to do something. You in a position. God done elevated you in a position to be able to talk to the leadership. Talk to the king. Mordecai. I, I knew it was coming. <laughs> Mordecai. Can't, ain't nobody told me. The Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Mordecai, her uncle. He was pleading with her saying, go back. Say something to the king. And sometimes, in order to get the peace, I tell you, you got to go through pain and suffer. Sometimes people got to, they got to coach you along. They got to make sure they minister to you. And sometimes they got to push you and lead you to be able to make some decisions. He said, remember, it's, it's two kinds of peace. Peace is holding your peace, not saying anything. And then there's the peace of God. Meaning sometimes you got to take action. You got to put legs to that very thing. And he was telling Esther, he said, now ain't the time for you to be in peace, laid back, and conservative. He said, right now, we need you to speak because they put a hit out on us. We, we, we could have died. And Esther said, sent a word back to her uncle, Mordecai, and said, I'm going to see the king. He said, she sent word back. She said, I need y'all to fast and pray. Put sackcloth over your head and ashes, and I need y'all to worship God. Well, I'm going to see the king. She said, if I perish, let me perish. I am going to see the king. That was a faith move. God had to give her peace because she realized the consequences. She knew that was a death sentence for the average person. But it's not a death sentence if you're connected to God. Can I get a witness up in here? She she was connected to the king of all kings. And her uncle, Mordecai, was connected to the king of all kings. And he knew pressure comes. He knew people died. He knew it could have it could have came to pass that they could have all been wiped out. But Mordecai said, We got one chance. I believe he was looking at Esther like she was the savior, which she was. Because she was imitating, standing on behalf of the people and going into the presence of the king. And it wasn't normal for her to be able to do that. 
she was supposed to be, even though she was a, a, a lover of him and he loved her, it's still, they had rules and regulation they had to follow. And she was disobeying one of the rules that were laid out before the people. Esther wasn't supposed to go in front of the king unless she was invited. He had to summon her. But she said, no, if I perish. And that's what you got to look at. The say, if I die, let me die. I'm getting to Jesus. I'm going to make my way to Jesus. Just like the woman with the issue of blood. She made it. She pressed her way. She pressed her way. She bent over, but she pressed her way. Blind born a man, pressed his way. Cried out, thy son of David, have mercy on me. I need some peace. My people need some peace. Sometimes, most of the time, we got to intercede for others. We're interceding for our children. We're interceding for our church. We're interceding for our country. We're interceding for our world, the leaderships. We in, we interceding for them, meaning we're standing in the gap by faith, making these gold, bold confessions, even though we can't see it. We said somehow God is going to make a way. They keep talking about what's going on in the world and and, 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 and certain people. I ain't mentioned no name. Y'all know what I'm talking about can get away with murder. But you know what my Bible says? My Bible says whatsoever man sows or woman, they're going to have to reap. That's what you keep believing. And you also got to measure your own life by that. Whatever you sow, you're going to reap. So if, you, if you're sowing something negative or you're sowing something against people, got your mouth on people or doing evil or hurting other people, you, you live long enough. And God will let you live long enough Get paid back for what you did. Now, I ain't telling y'all late. I'm telling you this for a reason. Because if you believe it, you need to repent right now. And start planting good seeds. So you can produce a good harvest. I, I'm talk, I'm preaching already. I'm teaching already. But y'all might, y'all don't have to uh, agree with me. But I know some things I done did, I had to reap. God ain't going to let you escape from that. Because you belong to him. And Esther she made that bold confession. She stood. Chapter 4. Take, take a look at it. Read it yourself. That's why I, I didn't have time to go over it. I need you to read it yourself. Read the st a story of Esther. It will bless you. She was put in a position to make a difference that bring peace to her people. Heart condition. I said it before. Right behind me. Let not your heart be troubled. I went over that. John uh, chapter 14 verse 1. Uh, here's a protection, his protection and peace. Psalms 91, 1 and 2 says, He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress. My God in Him will I trust. Can I say that again? He that dwells. He'd have been chosen. You and I, the believers, even the unsaved person who hungry for the Lord. These are the blessings. This is the peace and his protection. He said, he that dwell in a secret place of the Most High. If you know how to get to him, if you know how to call on him, you know how to pray to him, you know how to cry out to him. God hears you. He's everywhere. He's omnipresent. He's everywhere. You call on him, he's there. He said, if you make your bed in hell, he's there. If you fly like eagle to the highest mountain, he is there. So all you got to do is just call on the name of the Lord, and he will show up. He said, he that dwells in the secret place of the Most High, the Most High is him, shall abide under my shadow of the Almighty. Shadow, his protection, his peace, his protection. He will put his arms around you. He will put the wings of protection around you. His angels will guard you day and night. You got to realize that the God that we serve is almighty. He's all powerful and there is none like him. Can I say it again? There is none, not one like him. And one other thing I love about this text here, he said, uh, under the shadow of the almighty, I will say to the Lord, he is my refuge. That's a bold confession. He is. God is. He's my all in all. He's everything that I need. He is the one I put my trust in. He's the one I put my tears in when I'm crying and I feel like giving up, but I still cry unto him. He, God, God is just so awesome. He's the, my grandma used to say, he's my leaning post. Well, I, I never knew what she talking about. She said, I can lean on him 
when I get in trouble, when, when I'm tired and weary, when I done made some mistakes, I try to carry this burden alone and I get weary on the journey and I need something to lean on. He is my leaning post. He is my high tower. I can look up and see him from a distance and it gives me hope to keep going on. Can I get an amen in here? This is what we need, his protection and his peace. Next one is, oh, this this is a good one. He, talking about peace, trust in God, and he provides peace. Trust in him. Psalms 23, I love this text. Everybody know this. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want out to worry about nothing. We are the sheep and in need of a shepherd. We need guidance. David realized he couldn't do it on his own. And neither can you. David said, the Lord is my shepherd. He said, I cannot guide myself. I can't guide others unless God is my shepherd. Because if I know if God is with me, even if somebody follow me, I know we're in good hands. Because I have a savior. I have my hero. I have my God. I have my savior. I have my promise. I have my protection. I have everything that I need in the shepherd. He is a good shepherd. And and one thing, uh, as we go farther, it says in this text, it says, his peace will give you rest. What I mean by that? Uh, verse two, it says, he maketh me to lie down. To lie down in green pastures. He... It, not only is it a beautiful place, but it's a quiet place. A place where I can get some peace running by the water. He said, lead me beside the still waters. The still waters, calm, calm waters. He restores my soul. My mind is being renewed through him. My mind, he's restoring me. Get me to think strong better. Get me to act better. He give me something to hold on to. And I can trust him no matter what. I said, Lord, I thank you. I thank you for your mercy. I thank you for your grace. And he just restores me. He builds me back up. When I done empty myself with the weight of the world and doubt, fear, and frustration. I said, Lord, I ain't got no money. Lord, my kids are acting up. Lord, how am I going to make it? Lord, I'm sick and they're sick. Lord, what am I going to do? The job is acting funny. Everything is seen to be falling down around. He can give you that peace. Lead you beside the still water. And then it says, this is what it says. Watch this. Not only he restored my soul, he leaded me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. My God, my God. Can I go a little farther? Yea, do I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. Seem like it's over, but it's just a shadow. The shadow. It's on the image of me. It ain't really me. It's just a shadow. Don't my shadow walk through the valley of death. I don't have to fear no evil. Why? Because he is with me. He is my rod, my staff, and he comfort me. That's the peace. God said he will comfort me. He will bring peace in the middle of a dire and desperate situation. Near death. The shadow, near death. Meaning it looks bad. It feels bad. But God said, be at peace because I am your good shepherd. Ha hallelujah, somebody. He is our good shepherd and i want to give thanks to god for being my shepherd the lord is my shepherd the lord is my light the lord is my all in all that's what we need to do help me help me uh, say a declaration unto god i am the righteousness of god say it oh, say it to you. say i am the righteousness of god i've been selected i've been chosen i've been adopted into the family i have the blessings of god all over my life you won't have peace until you do you won't have peace until you accept that. Now, I got a couple of things I need to go over real quick. Um, I'm going to finish this up. Uh, the God of peace will follow you all the days of your life. He said, though I prepare a table before you in the present, he will prepare a table. Meaning your enemies, he, he telling you, it doesn't matter. It, I got you covered. Your enemies, your money, your peace of mind, you need sleep and rest. I got you. I got you covered. He said, Though I prepare a table before you in the presence of your enemies, I would anoint your head with oil. He said, your cup will run over. You have overflowing. Remember, if you're trusting in the shepherd, 
if you're trusting in the Almighty, surely goodness and mercy shall follow you. Surely goodness, good things, and mercy. Meaning, though, even though it's bad, his mercy will cover you. Even though you mess up, his mercy is renewed every morning. Come on now. That's some benefits. Benefits ought to bring you some peace. I know before, when I started working, I worked at Wheaton for three and a half years. I've been on my job for 33 years. But when I started my first uh, couple uh, months, I needed some insurance. I had three kids. I need some insurance. So the job I went to that I'm currently at now, 33 years later, going on 34 years, I needed some insurance. And until I got that insurance, I was scratching. Until I got the benefits, I was scratching. You know, when a doctor uh, visit came from one of the kids, I, I was nervous. I said, do we got enough money? You know how you get? You're panicking over the bills. So probably leave the peace. These challenges we go through in life leads us to the godly peace that we've been longing for. So the benefits of having insurance gave me some peace. Now imagine having the benefits from God. The benefits of his love. The benefits of his mercy. It means I mess up because I'm connected to him. Because I believe in the son who God sent for my sake to be my savior. And I accept him as my Lord and savior. I have peace. I have mercy. I can be forgiven. I can call on ladies. Oh, Lord, have mercy on me. But one thing I want to challenge you believers is that we can't keep just taking God's grace for granted. Don't be out there delivered because you know God's going to forgive you. You got to try not to. He, he told the woman who was caught in an adulterous situation. He said, where are your accusers? Where are the ones who um, was going to stone you? They were going to take your life. He said, where are they now? And she looked around. She said, Lord, there's none. He said, well, neither do I. But he told her something that we always don't want to, we don't listen to this part as much as we should. He said, go and don't do what you did anymore. Go and sin no more. If I could stop there for a second. Believers, we we, we got to stop going to sin. Again, yes, I'm talking to myself as well. That's taking God's mercy for granted. And I'm right at this moment, I want to say, Lord, forgive me. Ask the Lord to forgive you. Lord, forgive us. Give us the strength not to continue in our sin. Because you done brought us out of that. You don't forgave us for our sin. And Lord, we need, that's the least we could do is do our best not to fall back in this sin. And I believe uh, by his grace and by his mercy and by our love for him and our uh, dedication to him, we can, we can work on those type of things. You need to always try to work to do better. And I, I'm, I'm with you. We need to work and do better. We need to stop talking about people. It leads me to, y'all give me a few minutes. I need to find my slide, but I need to jump ahead because I really want to talk about our behavior. Um, our behavior can lead can lead to the blessing. It really can. Give me one second. I'm coming, coming here. Here we go. In search of my peace. I'm going to start right there and then we're going to continue on. And we're wrapping up here. And in search of my peace, Psalm 61 is a Psalm of David. He said, Oh God, listen to my cry. Hear my prayer. From the ends of the earth, I cry to you for help. When my heart is overwhelmed, when I can't take it, I need you to lead me to that rock which is higher than I. For you are my safe refuge, a fortress. Where my enemies cannot reach me. That safe place. That place of peace. So when my heart is overwhelmed. Why, why did I go there? That you need to be in search of peace. And the only way you can find it. I told you was through him. God had to lead you. He had to be the. You, no man come unto the Father unless he's drawn. I mean God sent the word out. And his word would not return to you void. You heard somebody preaching the good news. You seen somebody talking about the goodness of the Lord. Or you, you just cried out and God met you right where you are. But it was the word of God. It was the word of God that has power to be able to draw you. The word of God. Remember St. John chapter 1 was the word. In, in the beginning was the word. The word was God. Jesus Christ was the word and dwelt among us. The word is all a part of the triune being. We're talking about God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. It's all connected. 
And each one of them could draw you. Holy Spirit draw you, live on the inside of you. Jesus Christ, he is the word. And God is the creator of all things, who knows all things. And you can't come to the Father and let you're drawn through the Son. So the Son had to connect with you some type of way for you to have attention to want to cry, cry to you. David had a relationship with God. Yes, he did. And I know you said I'm talking about David a lot when my foundation scripture was Paul. Paul was writing to the church. There was a lot of chaos going on. We talked about that. A lot of chaos was going on. But the reason why I want to stay here with David, because we can relate to it. He said, when my heart is overwhelmed, when I'm in a messed up place, he said, lead me to that rock. And we know that rock is Christ Jesus. The, the word, the solid foundation, God himself, the existing one. Lead me to that, which is higher than I. Which would bring me out of my dark and low place. It would pick me up. It would surround me. It would be that light to my feet. My path way would be straight. I can see clearly. And I have a direction to go. This is what David was referring to. But we also lead into where I'm going is that even though David cried out and he was talking about an overwhelming place, sometimes we put ourselves in an overwhelming place. And the one thing I want to tell you that puts us in an overwhelming place is our mouth. Yes, our mouth. I'm, I'm going through my, here it is right here. This is what I was looking for. I'm sorry, y'all. I was trying to scroll and, and look for it. I'm looking for it for a reason because you need this. This is the biggest hindrance to keep us from having the peace of God. Your own mouth. This little thing, this tongue, small but mighty and deadly. Controlling your tongue. Watching what you say, like I said, talking yourself out of a blessing, saying, Lord, I don't know. I don't know if you can do it. I seen you do it for them. I don't even really know if you did it for them. It, they said you did it for them. These are all the things we wrestle with in our mind, and the devil is just playing more and more in our mind, and we keep entertaining it. We have to learn how to cast down these things, but also we got to learn how to tame our tongue. We know what we're saying. I, I I don't need nobody to say, did you hear what you said? No, you know what you said. And we need to start paying a close attention to that because that could be not only robbing us of a peace, but robbing us of a blessing or getting us out of the hole that we're in. And we, we wonder why we're praying to God and we don't move out of our situation, of our situation don't improve. It could be. Could be. That tongue. Controlling your tongue can bring some peace. It can lead to peace in the midst of chaos. The tongue is a small but powerful weapon. Without restraints, it is very dangerous. Somebody talk to me here. This, this mouth can condemn, it can paralyze, it can it can cause being on top and cause you to fall because you wasn't thankful and you stepped on some other people because you was up there. You was higher than higher than everybody. You high and mighty. And you talking about people. Knowing that you went through some of the same stuff they went through. Look at them. How could they? Look at the children. And your child just as bad as they are. Our mouth is dangerous. It's a dangerous weapon. But it also can be a powerful weapon to bring blessings. The question is, I'm going to go there after I finish this. Without restraints, it's very dangerous. It can also bring warmth and kindness. It can. Yes, it can. Psalms uh, 34, it says, I will bless the Lord. Here it is. I will bless the Lord. The same tongue that you can use to talk about people and to condemn people and bring a curse on your life is that same tongue you can use to bring blessing on other people. David said, oh, bless the Lord. I will bless the Lord. He said, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul shall make a boast in the Lord and the humble shall hear thereof and be glad. Oh, 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 magnify. David was and compelling people to come and praise God with him. Our tongue can lift up God. It can pronounce blessings. It can decrease some things. And one thing I do, I do want to say, you know, 
Uh, I hear a lot of preachers had it, and I even had said it. We, you know, you, you, we we name it and claim it and and decree things and name it. I, I'm gonna tell you, I haven't stopped, and I ain't gonna let nobody stop me, because I wouldn't be where I'm at if I didn't declare and decree some things. But I declared and decreed it by faith. I wasn't doing it to to make somebody think that I'm more holy than anybody else. I want them to say, oh, listen to Pastor Matt. He's decreeing thing. No, I was in trouble. <laughs> I had some pain going on in my life. I need some peace. And I had to decree some things. I had the Lord decree. I had to decree some blessings in my life. Some blessings over my family life. To get that peace. Because God said, speak to the mountain. And command it. Of, of Mark chapter 22. It said, have faith in God. Then we can speak to the mountain. But we got to have faith in God. I'm talking to somebody here. Have faith in in God, meaning in his word, in his son, in the Holy Spirit, the written word of God, the holy word of God that corrects us, reproves us, encourages us, strengthens us. He is a God of wrath. He's a, he's a sovereign one. God is complete in everything he does. That's what we have to speak about and represent. But our tongue, back to that tongue again. It can bring blessings and curses. David said, I will bless the Lord. He chose the blessing. But David had also did some cursing in his life. But that's the blessing we have. We have that connection. We can be convicted. The Holy Spirit can let us know where we went wrong and get us back on track. The question is, how are you using your weapon? We're talking about peace here. Are you using that weapon that can bring peace? Or are you using the curse? Blessing or cursing, victory or defeat. Proverbs 18.21, it says, Death and life are in the power of the tongue. And those who love it and indulge in it, this NIV version, will eat its fruit and bear the consequence of their words. I, I'm, I'm closing here. I'm closing right here, y'all. Had a good time with y'all. But I need y'all to hear me loud and clear in my closing. If you want peace and you don't have it, please make sure it ain't because you got your mouth on somebody else. You ain't got your mouth on the pastor. You ain't got your mouth on the church. You got your mouth on the co-worker. You got your mouth on those in authority over you. That's a hard one. Sometimes people in authority over you, you want, you want to, oh, you want to keep your mouth, pray for them. Pray for those in authority. And while you praying, pray for me. So I can do the same thing. We need to encourage one another. We can do that by the tongue. Remember, having faith in something. Faith is something you don't see, but you believe in it. So you have to speak it. Keep speaking it. Rehearse over and over again till your soul and spirit grabs it. And you stand on that solid rock when your heart is overwhelmed. Lead me to that rock which is higher than I. You connect with the Holy One. You connect with God. You realize that the word of God in Jesus, everything he done is perfect will. The fulfillment is done. It's complete. And now, only not only that, but he done sent me some help, the Holy Spirit. So when I go to sleep, it's with me. When I wake up, it's with me. It's living on the inside of me. I ain't got to cry. Oh, God, it's right here. It's in me. Once you can receive that, and once you know your mouth hasn't been the one that's been causing condemnation, on yourself or anybody else. That's peace. That's godly peace. That peace is that passes all understanding. That's what we live for. That's what this class is all about. Finding my peace. David had to go through it. Esther had to go through it. Blind Bartimaeus had to go through it. All Samuel, Saul, King Saul. All of them. You had, you had Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. All of them had to go through some pain, some pressure to lead them to their peace. In my closing, I'm Pastor Gary Mack. I really enjoyed this class tonight. But please, this is one of the biggest ones I'm closing on right now. It's up to you. This tongue is a weapon. What are you going to sign to do? You're going to pronounce blessings or speak curses over people or over your life. If we can learn to, to control that tongue and cry out to God 
and said, Lord, have mercy on us. Imagine what this world would look like. Believers getting together and said, we stand and trust in the name of the Lord together. Ain't that a powerful thing? The peace of God. Finding peace in the middle of chaos. Thank you for sharing with me. Thank you for fellowshipping with me. Until next week, until we meet again, I am Pastor Gary Mack. And we find in our peace. In Jesus' name. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. And enjoy your night.